Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you my latest changes to my braking machine. So, quite a apparatus I've built and designed in iterations over the last year or so. <laughs> so, stick around and I'll show you more after the intro. So this has been a quite a uh, quite a machine. <laughs> I've been testing like L-shaped parts with a braking force, trying to break it in a uh, controlled fashion. But uh, my previous design was giving me two random results, so I needed to redesign. Sometimes it broke at the same place, but sometimes the test pieces broke at a totally different place. And I was trying to get a uniform experience with the same material, with the same print. But uh, I changed over the design and I'm going to show you in my close-up. So here's the, the main part, uh, the breaker <laughs> or slider. But here's the handle. Now the handle has a wire. Uh, I previously was using a shoestring material that was keep that kept on breaking at uh, 35 kilos. But now I can maximize the meter that goes up over to 50 kilos or 500 newtons. And so that's this is more rigid. And here's the, the sled that breaks the material. Now the, the wire pulls on, on this sled here. And the specimen is inserted here in the middle. And when I pull on it, it's a straight force, the height of the, the meter and the height of the test piece is always in, in line so it's a straight pull previous design was breaking it by pulling the l shape apart uh, so it was not a very controlled fashion sometimes the the puller slipped on the test piece but now the test piece is wedged here in between and can't go anywhere else than in the pulling direction so this is a quite an improvement of the design. So now to start the procedure I have to turn on the machine the meter and it calibrates itself uh, in a few seconds then I put it on, on peak and that will store the maximum value so if I pull on the, the handle and release it still has the value of the pulling force at that time so I don't have to do a have a big video of the screen that was also giving me quite some pro problems <laughs> in the previous design. I was using my phone to record the screen on the previous meter uh, that was not giving me consistent results. But now, if I pull more on the handle, you can see how the specimen stretches. And at some point, like in this case, 282 newtons, uh, the test piece broke apart. And what I do is to print out 20 specimens. And when I've got the first one, I hit, can hit save. And then I will store that value in memory. And now I can do another test. And this one uh, is saved by pressing save. And what I do is to run through 20 of those to get the average value. Compared to, compared to previous design, this process takes much less time to load and break. And also, because I can just hit save, I don't have to record its value while I'm doing the break process. I can just take my time to, to break all the pieces. And hit save to store the data and move on to the next one. Sometimes the, the pieces come fly off <laughs> into the air. I have to be careful not to have my cat around the device while I'm doing this. So I don't have <laughs> the parts flying into the cat. You'll probably try to sweep all the test pieces to the floor. <laughs> One thing I still have to work on, and sometimes they break at this point, and, and sometimes in the middle. I still have some issues with getting consistent results where, where it actually breaks, 
but uh, the value is is more more consistent than before. So now I have all the values stored in the memory, and I will move into the computer and, and enter those values in an Excel sheet, and I will show you my method of, of getting the average number. So here are previous tests. I've done quite a number of filaments, and those are the values for that filament. Here's the manufacturer type of filament and, and color. So in this case, this is printed solid DSA PLA, and that's a PLA, and the color is green. And then I go over to the machine and can hit check and then I can rotate through the values you can see the values change as I go through so I can start typing in the numbers so as I go th through the, the numbers it takes a while to enter in and I entered in in Newton, that's uh, the value that the meter is default set to and then I convert to kilograms in the Excel sheet. So now I have all the values on the break test. Normally I do 20, but I already had tested two samples, so I only had 18 samples. But here's the average number. And this is in newtons and this is in kilos here. And what I have here is a, a average average value for PLA and patchy copolyester polypropylene nylon and ASA filaments. So the value for a, its PLA adds up to, to the value here. And then I have a graph and I have to add in the latest latest data. I have to expand the field, um, so we'll get in the, the volume. And here you can see the see the test filament I was using in this test, and here's the value for it. And it's at adds up as well to the PLA average number. So compared to my average number of PLAs, this filament is a little bit less strong in layer adhesion than the average PLA, but PLA is one of the most strongest filaments in regard of layer adhesion. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of filaments here, and my plan is to extend this. When I get a new filament, I'll, I'll do a test like this and, and add it in my database. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get a more data, and I'll be able to do videos on, on different type of materials. Like here, you can see PLA, patchy, cold polyester, uh, polypropylene, nylon, and ASA. Um, and those are from the samples. Some of those filaments uh, are just a few tests for, for each filament. Like ASA is just one type of filament from filamentum ASA. I don't have any other type of ASA. So it's not very... <laughs> there is not so high number of tests behind that value. But uh, like for PLA, I'm, I'm getting more data in. And, and so the average number will get more realistics, realistic. But, uh, this is how I present the, the data. This is how I do my brake tests nowadays. It's uh, always changing. I'm sure I will do some changes to this design at a later point and give a and do an update video on it. I tend to find some problems and want to show you guys what I've been doing. But this will be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please give this video a, a like or a, a comment and let me know what you think. But for now, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.